Some of my favorite videos that I've put out on YouTube have been ones that I've not necessarily planned. And that's certainly the case here this morning at Four Golf. Very briefly, I wasn't hitting the ball too well. And I was really surprised and shocked just how well these clubs performed. Now dispersion is a word that everybody loves to use and uh, forgiveness is another one that the manufacturers like to use but often it's very difficult to judge but uh, this morning with the help of uh, Trackman 4 what I've noticed is that I was hitting the ball pretty garbage in my warm-up sessions. I was using a couple of clubs and uh, then I took a look at where I was hitting in terms of the club face and how good the, the clubs were performing. And that's where I got very, very shocked and where we ended up with today's video. So in recent months, I've been uh, in through a number of videos, a strong advocate of five woods and seven woods in particular, the kind of Mizuno and uh, the ping efforts that I've tested in recent months have ended up in my bag. And the reason I've done that is because of A, their versatility and B, sort of a term I would use, which is how easy they are to use. And I'm not exactly sure quite what that means, but today I've certainly found out uh, some of those answers if you like and forgiveness being that key thing and at a time when i was hitting the ball or swinging the club particularly poorly in this last hour i recognized just how good these clubs were and why they should be in the bag of every average golfer and i'll go into some more detail and explain exactly what i mean by that right so the original intention of today's video was to test and examine the difference between three five woods one from pxg one from ping and one from Mizuno. And I will do that. I'll give you my opinion along the way of how I think these things differ. Uh, and we'll look at dry ball data at the very end. But it was the dry ball data that I've already collected that threw up the biggest surprise and why the changing emphasis on this video came about. And the basic thing is this, spoiler alert is that all three of these perform incredibly well. They all go similar in terms of distance. They all get there in different ways. And like I said, I'll explain that later. But there was one thing each of them had in common, and that was the ability to get the ball out there even when I didn't find the center of the golf club. And that for me is the more important factor that as average golfers, we should pay greater attention to. So I'll hit a few balls, I'll tell you the differences, and then we'll look at the, that dry ball data I referred to. And I think the proof why every average golfer should have one of these style of clubs, I'm not saying one of these three, in their bag, because it could be a massive help to you. These are really three very different five woods. Uh, visually, first of all, huge differences. Um, not so much from the underneath, and uh, I'll show you some images going over the top now of uh, the top line, which is where the major difference lies in terms of the finish. Uh, the matte finish of the Ping, you've got the high gloss finish of the Mizuno and the PXG, they've got that new pattern that again I think is very much going to divide and split opinion. So that's the first thing you've got to be comfortable with, what do you like at address. In terms of uh, loft of these, instead of standard lofts, 17.5 is the max product uh, that I've got in the G425, 17.5, the other two are 18 degrees. But the other thing is to mention they're all fully adjustable. I think that's key when you're buying fairway woods because again, when you're looking to get your gap in right at that top end of the bag, I think adjustability is key. The other major difference between them is how they sit at address in terms of the length of the profile is quite different and then also the height in terms of how shallow they are. And again, the, uh, the ping being the sort of looks to me visibly the more shallow at address, more sort of flattened pancake look then into the Mizuno, but the five of the PXG is a more chunkier, smaller, stubbier profile. So there are major differences that I referred to about how I think clubs are going to be decided, how you're going to buy these things in the future, because technology has got such that if I'm honest and do this review, people, I think people uh, want to see a review, some criticisms, and uh, you're looking at trying to pick hairs in these things, because honestly, you try those three products and you see where you can pick fault because they all perform exceptionally well. So for me, my mind, you're more and more inclined to be buying with your eyes and with what you hear in terms of sound. Uh, so it's a big, big deal now, visually, what you like at address. For me, on a personal level, I could play all three. Honestly, I think they look superb and they also play very well indeed. I'm gonna hit some balls and see what they do in terms of how they sound different because trust me, they do. Right, so we've set up our uh, Trackman up onto Adair Manor and we'll try and find a few fairways here. But the idea really is to it, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna hit one ball with each of these and we'll see, I always say the audio's up here, so whether or not we can tell the difference, but I'll try and certainly explain to you how different these are in terms of from a sound perspective. That's a decent first ball, I think for me, again, whether you can pick it up, the Mizuno has got quite a, quite a sort of harsh ping out of it. A really good ball in terms of where it's going in terms of the fairway. 
209 carry down the middle decent shape decent ball speed but again sits to the dress really nice it's that gloss finish that again is quite different from the next two i'm going to pick up right so next up is the ping massively different now in terms of finish that matte black finish that uh i think is again really classy very simple to sort of frame the ball um but again i'm expecting something i've noticed quite a bit is the difference in sound from the ping already you got that again but it's the one negative i have it's not going to worry everybody but just for me just that little bit harsh off the club face and quite different and like i said sits very shallow but as does the mizuno as well didn't that get that one quite as well and you just made the fairway right so last but not least is the pxd product and i think this is the one that's uh, moved away from the sort of what we're used to seeing in terms of that top line very very different that's going to be a bit of a uh, a split opinion no doubt and the other notable difference is they've gone for a much smaller, smaller chunkier profile almost a throwback if you like to a more traditional style of fairway wood um, but certainly a little bit higher in terms of the uh, the depth of the club um, but a little bit more of a stubbier look as well let's see if we can pick up the audio a little bit on that first but hopefully you got that one picked up in terms of the sound for me They've got that balance right, a bit like Mizuno have, where you've got that thing where you can sort of hear the ball going out there. You feel like it's got a bit of a power, but it's definitely the softer feeling out of the three and the softer sounding. So that, again, very much down to a personal preference. But like I said, they're the differences on why you might choose each of these three. But the real key is what they've all done in terms of that performance. So I think it's time to get into that uh, data and see how my performance surprised me on how bad my performance was and how good the performance of the clubs was. Right, so I mentioned at the start of this video that uh, the biggest shock was for me, not the performance of each of these clubs, but the performance of how good they were when I didn't hit the ball that well. And I'll explain with a little visual from a screen recording that we took. When I started to have a look through the numbers and really utilize TrackMan 4 to its full potential in terms of looking at impact location, and as you can see, I pretty much found every aspect, every area of the club face on each of these three clubs. Low on the face, high on the face, and very rarely in the middle, to be quite honest with you. And what it did for me, it gave me some assurances that this word forgiveness that a lot of the manufacturers use is often very difficult to have been measured in the past. And one of the things I wanted to do with Trackman 4 was to look at these kind of things and pay particular attention to uh, how good they've been. And to be honest with you, when I've done reviews in the past or in recent weeks rather, swinging a club okay, we've been relatively fine in the middle of the club, so that tells you absolutely nothing. But today, when I was swinging really poorly, to go in and look at that kind of information was a real telltale sign. In terms of dry ball data, what I'm gonna do, I'll put the three sets of average numbers up in front of you now for each of the clubs, and honestly, there is nothing to split either of them. You will buy one of these three clubs if you're looking for a five wood. It'll be based on things like how they sound, how they look at a dress and, and budget. But in terms of performance, what I'll say for each of them is this element of forgiveness, which I find incredible. Um, as average golfers, I always say in this channel in particular, you're looking to see what a club does when you don't hit the middle of the club face. Because more often than not, on a Saturday and a Sunday when you're playing your golf comps, uh, no disrespect to you or me, but we ain't going to find that sweet spot that often. So to finally see some um, visual, if you like, to back up that idea that these clubs are forgiven is incredible. And the only way you'll really get that is from a consistency perspective. If you look at the data at the very end, I'll throw each set of the numbers. Um, and on every shot, they performed very, very similar indeed. And those shots were from that data that I've shown you in terms of that sort of heat map on where I hit on the club face. That's the data that relates to it. And that's the bit that I find incredibly hard to believe, but also uh, an incredibly positive message in terms of manufacturers' claims that I've never really been able to sort of validate in the past. So for me, I say again, like I've done in recent weeks and months with seven woods, I think five woods again are becoming a real powerful tool. You get you to a decent uh, yardage quite easily. Launch conditions are really good. Bit of meat in terms of their head. So for me, that's a confidence booster when I'm uh, ironing up over the ball. So no reason why more average golfers shouldn't be using them. But with that added sort of uh, backup, if you like, that this idea that forgiveness is in a club, I think that's sort of a real good idea and uh, backs up the, um, the, the the claims that, like I said, it's all right, these manufacturers are passing around these words, but you need to see that. And I think there's, uh, for the first time, at least from my perspective, 
I've really seen the positivity in terms of that performance. Right, that's me done. Um, I've no more to say. The only thing I will say, if you're uh, not subscribed already, then c please consider doing that. And also hit that uh, like button because uh, it helps us with the YouTube algorithm and uh, ultimately gets us more views, which is what we're trying to do here. Right, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you all soon.